rate limiting is the concept of restricting access to an API based on the number of requests. There are three different reasons for rate limiting. First, it increases security. We can limit how many times an endpoint can be called. If we know how many users we have, we can set a reasonable limit and protect against a brute force attack or a denial of service attack. Second, it helps us save money. A rogue user or an attacker can call your consumption-based API over and over again, costing a lot of money. Restricting the number of times an API can be called on consumption-based API plans can save you a lot of money. Last but not least, if building a public API, you might want to restrict the number of requests for free users and have different tiers for premium users. In this video, we will learn how to use rate limiting introduced in .NET 7 in a ASP.NET Core web API application. Hi, I'm a software engineer with more than 10 years of experience on the .NET platform. And on this channel, you learn all about .NET development. Now, let's finally jump into Visual Studio and learn about rate limiting in .NET. I create an ASP.NET Core Web API project using minimal APIs and .NET 7. First of all, we define a rate limiter. We use the add rate limiter extension method to register a rate limiter in the service collection of the application. We use an anonymous method and provide rate limiter options as the argument. We use the add fixed window limiter to define a rate limiter with a fixed window. We use fixed as the policy name. Later in this video, I will explain the different rate limiting algorithms that you can use. For the fixed window rate limiter options, we set three properties. First, we set the permit limit to one. It's the number of requests that are allowed to happen. Next, we set the window to five seconds using the static from seconds method on the time span type. Last but not least, we set the queue limit to zero. I'll talk about queuing requests later in this video. Since rate limiting comes with .NET 7 out of the box, we do not need to install additional NuGet packages. Now that the rate limiter is configured, we need to enable the rate limiting middleware. We only need to use the use rate limiter extension method on the web application object. Very simple. Next, we want to apply the rate limiting to a specific endpoint. When working with minimal APIs, we can use another extension method called require rate limiting on the endpoint route builder. As the argument, we provide the policy name. Now that we defined the rate limiting policy, enabled the rate limiting middleware and specified our endpoint to require rate limiting, we want to test if it works as expected. We start the application and use the Swagger UI to execute the GET requests on the weather forecast endpoint. To monitor the requests, I open the developer tools and display the network tab. I repeatedly trigger the endpoint. As you can see, the first request completes and the following requests return a 503 status code. After I clicked a few more times, the configured 5 second window was over and another window was started. Therefore, another request is completed. In this case, I think a 503 status code meaning service unavailable isn't the best choice. Instead, I want to return a 429 too many requests. Let's quickly jump back into the code and change it. The rate limiter options have a rejection status code property that we can set to 429. I use the status codes class providing named constants. Let's start the program and test it again. Again, I open the console and trigger the get method a few times. 
As you can see, the failed requests now return the 429 status code instead of 503. Before discussing the four rate limiting algorithms, I want to show you the same example using a controller based ASP.NET Core Web API application. The definition of the rate limiter is the same for controller based ASP.NET Core applications. We also need to add the rate limiter middleware using the use rate limiter extension method on the web application type. Enabling the rate limiter for endpoints is different for controller based projects. In the weather forecast controller, we use the enable rate limiting attribute and provide the name of the policy as its argument. We can set the attribute on the controller level as shown in this example, or we can set it on specific methods. We can also enable the rate limiter on the class level and turn it off for a specific method using the disable rate limiting attribute. When we start the application and execute the get endpoint multiple times, we get the same result as with the minimal API project. The first request gets executed and the following requests are rejected until the defined 5 second window is over. Now let's talk about how the four built in algorithms define how to restrict access to the endpoint. Fixed window. The add fixed window limiter restricts access based on a fixed time frame. For example, we can allow 10 requests per second, or we can allow 50 requests per minute. The sliding window algorithm is based on the fixed window algorithm, but allows for a more complex definition. When using a sliding window, the time frame is split into multiple segments. The requests used in a segment are rolled over to the next segment. After the window expires, the available requests are calculated per segment. It's a more granular approach compared to a fixed window. Consider the following example. We define a sliding window of 60 seconds or a minute and allow 100 requests. We define six segments. The first segment uses 10 requests. We have 90 requests left for the second segment. The second segment uses 70 requests, we have 20 left. The third segment uses the remaining 20 requests. It means that we run out of requests for the fourth, fifth and sixth segments. When the first segment of the second window starts, we get the 10 requests back that we used in the first segment of the first window. A token bucket has an upper limit of the available requests. It adds a number of requests per time frame, but does not exceed the upper limit. Consider the following example. We set the number of available tokens to 100. We set 20 tokens per period and we set the replenishment period to 20 seconds. It means that we fill the bucket with 20 tokens whenever 20 seconds are passed. However, the bucket can never contain more than 100 tokens. This algorithm allows for scenarios where we want to allow a burst of many requests in a short time, but want to limit the number of requests in a time frame. The difference between a token bucket and a fixed window is that for the fixed window, once the limit is exceeded, we cannot make new requests until the window is over. With a token bucket, we can define how fast or slow new tokens are added to the bucket, allowing for new API requests. The concurrency algorithm works differently and limits the number of simultaneous requests. Each starting request reduces the concurrency limit by one. When the request is finished, it increases the limit by one again. The configuration is very simple. For example, we can allow five concurrent requests on an endpoint. Besides selecting one of the four algorithms, 
We can also define a queue to handle incoming requests. We use the same fixed rate limiter configured before. We now set the queue limit property to 2 and the queue processing order to oldest first. When we start the application and execute the get endpoint, we get an immediate result for the first execution. The second execution doesn't provide an immediate result. It isn't rejected but also not executed. It takes a few seconds until the request is executed. The reason is that the request is put into the queue because there is no request permitted within the remaining 5 second window. As soon as a new window starts and another request is permitted, the request is taken off the queue and handled. Besides using a queue, you can also use custom code to handle rejected requests or implement custom code to handle retry scenarios. However, those topics are not part of this video and you can learn more about it in the documentation linked in the video description. I want to give you two possible scenarios for custom rate limiting policies. For example, you can implement a rate limiter that limits the number of requests per authenticated user. Or for a multi-tenant system, you could limit the number of requests per tenant. I'm not going to implement those examples in this video, but I think it's helpful to know what you can do with rate limiting. When using a rate limiter, make sure to test your application before going into production. There is nothing worse than blocking or rejecting requests that are justified. Depending on how complex your solution is, you might want to implement a custom tool firing HTTP requests, use Postman or one of the more capable tools such as JMeter. The code wolf has a great video where he tests the four rate limiting algorithms using JMeter. You'll find a link to his video in the video description. Rate limiting allows us to control how many times a endpoint is called. It helps us to protect against attackers and to cap the cost of consumption based APIs. If you build a public and paid API, you can also use rate limiting to limit the number of requests based on how much the user paid. Let me know what you think of the general concept of rate limiting API endpoints. And let me know if you're going to implement it in your ASP.NET Core applications. I'm always open to topic suggestions. Let me know in the comments below. Remember to like and subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video.